is make sure you're extremely, extremely, extremely hydrated before that procedure. You see? Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to become part of the Transplant Helper community. Well, good afternoon, Transplant Helper community. My name is Jim Merle, and I just want to pause for just a moment sit down and talk to you a little bit about what I've got coming up in the next few days, and that happens to be my annual checkup slash workup, whatever you want to call that. Now, I'm actually seven years post as of last month, but because things kind of got uh, knocked out of kilter because of COVID and a few other situations, my annual appointments were actually postponed until June, so one month late, and I'm going to be facing those in the next few days. Now, always like you would be as well there's always a little bit of apprehensiveness that goes along with that a little bit of concern a little bit of worry and no matter how well you feel as a matter of fact i can really say that because it was back on last year when i kind of went in with a little bit of confidence you know hey we're at the sixth year what can go wrong I was actually hit with the fact that my aortic valve needed to be replaced. So kind of some, you know, weird news coming in there when it was unexpected. And so now I kind of go into the situation with a little bit different look, uh, you know, just wondering what can actually be there. I'm not really worried about it, not panic, but, you know, concern is probably what I call it. Now, a part of my annual workup always includes, obviously, the blood work the echo, the EKG, the x-rays, that sort of stuff, and also includes a femoral artery type of heart cath, angiogram, whatever you want to call that. Now, a lot of people ask me sometimes, Jim, why do you go with doing the femoral artery cath as opposed to maybe a radial cath in the wrist or, or something else? Uh, well, I really do it because I don't have any choice. When they're doing a left and a right heart cath on me, my anatomy is just such that it's a lot easier for them to go in through the femoral artery. As a matter of fact, I've never allowed them to go through the radial here in the wrist, uh, basically because the anatomy is just not really there. And they've also told me that if we try to go in the wrist and it doesn't work out, we're going through the femoral artery, you know, in the groin anyway. So. I don't see taking a double shot at that. Now, I know there's a lot of people say there's a, a lot quicker recovery with this, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's probably true. Obviously, that's true, but I, I just tend to prefer this. I've also had people ask me, Jim, why are you even getting a, a heart cath done? Why are you not a member of the Allomap program or now the new Allosure program, that sort of thing? Well, there's a few reasons for that. Mainly, it comes down to my personal team, UAB Hospital, they just don't actually use the Alamap or Alishir programs. At least they don't use it on a widespread uh, situation. They don't trust the results of such. They figure the results have always been a little spotty. And at the end of the day, if something goes wrong with the Alamap, maybe your, your levels are a little bit off or something like that, they're going to end up in a cath lab anyway. But I always personally choose to bypass those tests because nowadays at least for me they're not actually looking for rejection anymore they've actually stopped doing biopsies they did that about uh three years ago stopped the biopsies i'm not actually having a biopsy as a part of this they're just simply going in and doing some investigative type exploratory type of things and there are a lot of things that you can find inside of a cath situation particularly going through the femoral artery and coming up doing the left and right heart cath that you can't really find any other way particularly when it comes to actual pressures obviously the map or alasure they're not checking for that and even a good echo although that can show an awful lot is not a real good determinant factor of what the actual pressures are inside the heart. In addition to that, as far as blockages, again, if you're doing that up against, say, an echocardiogram, yeah, they can detect blockages and they can take some measurements, that, but if they did find a blockage, obviously, inside of an echo, they're not going to do anything. And an echo is a part of my workup, but the cath is the ultimate part of that. And I, I've always found that, even though there's some risk to that, obviously, there's a risk of, of bleeding, there's a risk of uh, the worst case scenario, probably heart perforation or punching a hole in the heart which I've actually had not a lot of fun <laughs> kind of scary in the moment a little bit painful but you know although there's some risks that go along with that for me personally I've always thought that the benefits outweigh that because I get the best, most accurate information about my heart on an annual basis that they can possibly give. And so I think that's going to be, for me, always the path that I choose to take. Now, I know a lot of you are going other paths, and particularly if you're going in for an angiogram slash heart cath slash whatever in order to get a biopsy, you know, you may be definitely willing to replace part of that with something else. But as far as the real investigative test, I've always chose the heart cats 
as far as that goes. Now, let me give you a little tip, and I've shared this here on the program many, many different times, and several of you have commented that this, this just changed my life, but if you're ever going to go in for a procedure, and if this is really any procedure where either blood is going to be drawn and or a, uh, if you will, a catheter of some sort is going to be put in, even if it's just an IV, all the way up to having a heart cath done, if you're ever going for one of those procedures, the number one thing you need to do is make sure you're extremely, extremely, extremely hydrated before that procedure. You see, when you're dehydrated, a lot of times what happens in your body is basically all of your veins, your vessels, your arteries tend to constrict a little bit. That can make passing through those veins, vessels, and arteries a little bit more difficult. So if you're extremely hydrated before you go in, you're going to have a whole lot better time. It's going to dilate out all those veins and vessels and such. It's going to be a whole lot easier to pass through and a lot easier on the doctors and ultimately uh, obviously the, a lot easier on number one numero uno you uh, in that case it's gonna be a whole lot better okay and, and I've even had people say well how can I do that they put me MPO where they tell me I couldn't eat or drink after midnight well you have to be careful about that but what I generally do and I do this not just the day before but oftentimes several days before I start making sure I'm kind of doubling down on my hydration I make sure I'm drinking plenty of water plenty of clear liquids making sure I'm adding just enough salt in with that in my diet and stuff to kind of help that uh, for lack of better terms to stick you know to stay there and I make sure I'm extremely hydrated several days leading up and even even the day before even though they might cut me off of that midnight mark I'm going to be sure I'm hydrated all the way up to the last second and I'm going to drink that last sip of water uh, I'm, a, I'm a night owl anyway so I'll drink that last sip of water right before midnight to be sure I'm as hydrated as I can be and then when I go in the next morning say at 6 a.m. for that procedure everything's going to be dilated I'm going to do a whole lot better. So anyway, I hope this helps you out a little bit. I hope you'll keep me in your prayers the next few days. Again, I'm not really panicked or worried about this, but there's always some concern. And uh, yeah, so we look forward to that. So if you miss me next week, I will be having those procedures on Monday and on Tuesday. So probably be down for the count the rest of the week. At least that's typically how that goes. I try to take it easy. Not that I can't do anything, but I try to take it really easy. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And if you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always available. I'll help you as often and as much as I can. Stay strong, friends.